Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Martin Smutzer, and I'm the chair of the Whitehall Democratic Committee, which means nothing tonight because this is a bipartisan event with the Democratic and Republican candidates for Whitehall Council. Um, some of you may be wondering why in a primary we would be hosting and paying for um, an event like this, and, you know, before a primary election, a bipartisan event. And the genesis of it started two years ago. And two years ago, there were four seats up for council, and only one Democrat ran, and five Republicans ran. And three of the Republican candidates ran writing campaigns and captured the Democratic nomination. And we adopted them. And two of them I knew very well. Linda Book, who comes from a very good Republican family in Whitehall for years, and a friend for 30 years, and uh, Bill Beat, who I've known for 30 years. And it was great to have those two and support them on the Democratic side. And then a new guy named Stone Soborowski, who I never knew before, and I thought it was a funny first name. But you know, he, he got nominated and elected, and it's good to forge friendships with both sides of the aisle. Maybe Washington, D.C. can't get along, and maybe Harrisburg, Pennsylvania can't get along, but I think we in Whitehall can. Uh, I, this event would not occur without the help and work of a lot of people. So I would like all the Whitehall Democratic Committee people to just stand up and be noticed. I also would like my friends on the other aisle, the Republican Whitehall Committee members, uh, to stand up. Before I introduce the moderator, I would be remiss in not recognizing uh, three gentlemen who have served a long time on Whitehall Council, and I want to thank them for their service and their dedication. Phil Warr. so many candidates run for council. We have 10 total, and I want to congratulate the seven newcomers um, who were challenging, uh, both on the Democratic and Republican side, for a seat on council. Because anytime you put your name on the ballot, it's a very courageous act. So thank you for you doing that also. <laughs> we now like to introduce our moderator, um, David Marinick is uh, our moderator tonight. He's a former state representative, and he's a partner with Eckerd Siemens Law Firm in downtown. Uh, he has such a long resume that I'm going to have to do something I usually don't do, and that's read a little bit. Uh, I'm going to read it all. <laughs> <laughs> I've known him for 30 years. I never knew he was this impressive. All right. Dave's a 1970 graduate of North Hills High School, and he was on the track football team at Chocolate. Uh, David went on to um, graduate. Uh, point, he played uh, on a partial track scholarship and shot putter in college. He got an associate's in arts from the Community College of Allegheny County. He earned a bachelor's of, from, of justice from the University of Pittsburgh. He got a, um, he graduated from the Allegheny County Police Academy. He received an MPA, which is a master's in public policy from Pitts Graduate School of Public and International Affairs. And he's a law school graduate from Wiser Law School. And, Dave wanted to do three things growing up. He wanted to be a law enforcement officer, he wanted to be an elected official, and he wanted to be a lawyer. And he accomplished all three things. He began his law enforcement career as a radio dispatcher in Westview. At 
21 years old, he then became an elected councilman in Westview Borough. He was both a policeman in Westview and a dispatcher. He scored 100% on the Allegheny County Sheriff's Department um, test and went on to be a deputy sheriff for Allegheny County for eight years. While working the uniform division in homicide, um, he was in the fugitive squad in the homicide task force. David and his partner captured 18 escapees and 126 bones. He's certified in everything. And uh, at 29 years old, he decided to put his toe in the big waters and he ran for um, uh, state representative. Served a couple terms with his White Hall, as Westview Borough Council. Then he was elected to the Board of Pennsylvania Borough Association. At 29 years old, he beat an incumbent Republican in a district with 44% Democrats, and he went on to capture 71% of the vote in all the subsequent elections, which is a very, very hard thing to do. He served 20 years. He served under five different governors. He was the prime sponsor of 11 bills, and 21 amendments were signed into law. He's a strong supporter of the Second Amendment, and he's responsible for the law that requires side stops on the school buses, defining deputy sheriffs as Allegheny County police officers, requiring bars and taverns to be vacated a half hour before the legal serving time. He introduced all kind of legislation, and he brought tens of millions of dollars into his home district. Now, they loved him so much up in his area that they named the Avalon Public, the Merrick Avalon Public Library, the Avalon School District, David Merrick Field House, the Merrick Center at Accord, Baseball Field in Ross Johnson Fitness. I thought you were going to be dead to have stuff in there. <laughs> so, anyway, David had the unique ability, like I do, to agitate both Democrats and Republicans simultaneously. Even though he won his district with 71% of the vote, he proceeded to get gerrymandered out of his district by the Democrats who were in power. And the reason why is because he was an independent voice and an independent vote, and they didn't like that. The bosses wanted him to succumb under him. David is a, he was a board member of the University of uh, Pitt for 12, 14 years. He's on all kinds of boards and uh, charities throughout Allegheny County. And uh, on a personal level, he's married. His wife's an engineer. His two daughters are both in the finance field. And he's been a friend of mine for over 30 years. And he's going to do a great independent job tonight as moderator. Of the <laughs> all right, Marty, thank you for that introduction. Um, I've never done this before, so this is all new to me being a, a moderator. I've been chairman of uh, three committees in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, chairman of the property facilities at the airport authority and uh, at the University of Pittsburgh. I taught grad school for 12 years at that junction. Had many panelists that I was in charge of, so never done this before. So bear with me as we go. And if you don't like what I did or do tonight, I will give you back half of my salary and compensation for tonight. But just understand, half of nothing is Fair enough. nothing. So as we move through there, um, the rules of the game tonight uh, are that we will start with the alphabetically, I don't know who's the incumbent, who isn't, I really don't care. I look around and I'm, like, I'm in Ohio Township. That's the other part of the world that's over to the other side of the river. It took me forever to get here. I know two people in this room tonight and two other acquaintances, so I really don't know anybody here. You know, it's kind of negative here with who I know. Uh, so we're going to start alphabetically. First question here. The next question will go to the next person on down. Two minutes a person. We have Cindy here as our great assistant. At 30 seconds up, she will raise the card and let everybody know. Uh, when you get to the two minutes, we would ask you to stop. I'm going to bang a little gavel here. It says, you're done. Please obey the rules. Uh, when we come to the closing, what we'll do is we'll do it in reverse. We will start with Lacey Thomas and move back the other way. Uh, I've received several questions from people in the audience 
Um, it's going to be difficult to cover all those questions because if you have two minutes each candidate times 10 candidates, time adds up and we have limited time. I'm sure that the candidates will be happy to stay afterwards and talk to you and discuss the several issues. Uh, as I said that I'm not knowledgeable about Whitehall Borough, I am very impressed about Whitehall Borough. Um, home rule since 1975, 3.3 .3 square acres or, or square miles includes how many streets? Who knows how many streets in Whitehall? 700,000. Nah, come on, too high. This is like Easter egg hunt, warmer, colder. Come on, yes. 117, good answer. Okay. Uh, census. Um, uh, the 220 census. This is very impressive. You see, Allegheny County lost 50,000 people. And it was just in the post we said the other day, whether you're here or not, I do. Um, and the population here is 15,014 people. Since 2010 census, you increased 1,120, which everybody else is going down, you're going up. Notable athletes that I was impressed of, named one of two most livable communities in Metro Pittsburgh by the PAH Technical Services Advisory Corporation that advises about employee relocations. Um, the other thing is your public library. 90% um, rating in the top 25 in the whole Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. That's very impressive. So whatever you're doing there, I have a library named after me. We're not even close, so I'm jealous. We're going to change that. Um, the uh, 20 full-time police, you have seven uh, 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 dispatchers, seven administrative staff, 10 library staff, 10 public works employees. But overall, the people that you will be listening to tonight will be controlling your most important asset is your lifestyle and your pocketbook. You have a budget of $12,064,000 as a balanced budget here in Whitehall. So one of the questions we're gonna ask, and nobody knows what these questions are yet, but they're basically uh, general questions, is if you have to make a change, one of the questions is if you're gonna make a change, and what will you suggest you change, and how will you pay for it, and how will you, what will you do away with it? Okay, because we all, we all don't want to spend more money at our kitchen table. So we want to hear from our elected officials, or potential elected officials, um, about that. So as we interview the candidates tonight, we have five Ds, five Rs, I don't know who this is. I don't know who's an R and who's a D and who's a company isn't, so I guess I'm the right guy for that. They're all competing tonight for a whopping salary. Now hold on, $313.57 a month, or $3,762.84 a year. So these people, God, love, God bless you for coming out here and doing this you know, for a four year period for that. And uh, anybody that talks about a new person coming in, don't worry about a new person because the Township will pay a nominal fee, as every other borough is a township, I'm sorry, the borough will, for newly elected officials to go to what we call a boot camp. It's a two-day tutorial on how to be an elected official. Uh, it's put on by the Pennsylvania Borough <coughs> Association or by the ABLAW, Allegheny County League of Municipalities. So that's, that's the basis. Any questions from the field before we start? Good. Good crowd. I like it already. All right, so let's start with... The gentleman at the end, I can't see your name, I apologize. But, and it, it's a basic question, all right? Give us some of your background, tell us why you're running, uh, what do you think should be done? And I would encourage you, it's up to you, but if I was there, I'd stand up and, and talk, that's up to you. Your time will start whenever you start speaking. It's the same question for everybody going down the line. So, Sean? Uh, Hello everyone, my name is Sean Crane and uh, I'm honored to be here tonight uh, to run for White House Council. Um, so a little bit about my background, I just want to share a little bit about it. Um, so I've been a lifelong resident of White House my entire life. Um, I have a deep love for this community and I grew up, grew up in a family owned business where it is still value and hard work into me. Um, with that, 
um, I'm running because um, I'm running because the citizens need a voice, and I want to be the voice for them. Um, I feel like the communication needs to be a little better between council and the residents. Um, my background is in landscaping, and I have two decades of it, and I feel that I can use that to make better parks, um, a better community, and um, yeah, I'm honored to, to be here. So, thank you. Thank you, John. here in government and our, our guests here tonight. Some of you know me from the, the loud mouth and who speaks up at council, the, just the mom who lives on Southview Drive. But what you don't know about me is that I worked as judge of elections here at Allegheny County and within this room here for judge of elections for three years in an elected capacity. And also, this, that wasn't even my first go at government. I worked at the Bettis Laboratory where I operated the world's fastest supercomputers, which it took a congressional line item budgetary item to make that go because the Department of Energy and the US Navy does not like waste, fraud, and abuse. They like the ability to audit. They like the ability of people who know what they're talking about to write letters to uh, the Navy to explain what they're doing, to have engineers to rise up and say when projects are going wrong. Those were the rigor of principles that I'm most proud of. The thing that I would change most about Whitehall and how would I pay for it is to open the communication, open the doors of uh, government and bring a sense of open government to have open office hours of our elected officials and to have open committee meetings so that there isn't a bunch of criminals Thank you. Well, welcome to this Robbins County. We had one of these many years ago. My name is Phil Barr. I, I worked in two psychological research companies with a top secret clearance and managed the department. They were very secretive and very interesting to work in. I own my own advertising agency and printing company in the case for it. I'm a member of St. Gables and I'm a university minister. I serve the shut-ins communions every week, three week, three days a week, plus service in the church. That doesn't make me better than anybody else. What it does is try to help you, to give you a better place in Whitehall, which we think we've done. We've taken the time, we've proved that not many places will be putting in a $6 million pool and everybody's got to be satisfied until it's finished right. We protected it, we built this building over again on great money for money shop and many other kind of things. The police department in 84 when I was on and had to come back in and fight for it. I don't believe that all those things that I am important, I'm not, neither Bob nor Glenn. We did those things because of Barbara needed They needed the new firehouse. I've been a fireman for 53 years, lived in the borough for about 58. I gave them myself to this community. Thank you. Half your salary is gone now. That's right. And half of mine is gone. You're right. You're right, being able, it, when you get $300 a, a, month. a month, yeah, and I spend five, something wrong here. All right, your 30 seconds starts now. Okay. 
uh, and environment, of course. I managed the fire company for 10 years as the president, and I want us to keep going. And I don't dislike anybody. I love all of you. I'm demanded to do that. Now, I only care who wins. If their heart, their soul, will be in every move to make it better than we did, because those in front of us made it better. And I just want to continue that. My name is Tristan Machetti and I live on West Barlow Drive, just off of Provost. Um, I've lived in White House since 2015. Uh, moved here with my wife, uh, Teresa, who is a registered nurse, and my son, Rory, who's nine years old and finishing up third grade at White House Elementary. Um, we moved here from uh, living in the city for 10 years, and while that's fun to live in the city, we uh, were happy to work uh, in the city and have the easy access to everything. When it came time to raise a family, we needed to look for a better place to live. And that better place to live was White Hall. Um, not long after moving here, um, both my wife and I decided to get more involved in the community. Uh, her with the White Hall Borough Recreation Board, and me with the White Hall Democratic Committee, as well as Baldwin Manor Association, which runs the Baldwin Manor Park. And it was interacting with both of those groups and hearing more and more people being unhappy with how some of the direction White Hall was going. Not every direction, but there were some parts that were people were unhappy with that I decided to put my name in the ring to run for office. So that's why I'm up here. Um, a little bit of my experience, I worked for the University of Pittsburgh and half since 2006, and I'm currently an assistant director with their health science library. Um, as a part of that role, I am in charge of overseeing their $8 million a year budget, as well as a $16 million a year federal grant. Uh, both of those things require immense oversight, proper spending, but both keeping under budget as well as making sure what is being spent is being spent properly and uh, uh, with what is supposed to be done. I'm running today, um, up here today, to try to help make Whitehall, to continue Whitehall, to help make Whitehall better for the future and for future families like myself. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Bob McCown. And I'm a CPA. And I've actually lived in Whitehall Borough all my life, maybe for a few short years while I was in college. I, did. I grew up on Earlsdale, right up the street from Andy, lived on South Passage, and then when I got married, raised my family on the other side of Whitehall behind Bowen High School in School Rock, and where I presently live at uh, Mortgage Drive. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in accounting from Robert Morris University, like I said, I am a CPA. I got over 40 years' experience. Uh, what I'd like to do is just continue the good work that we've done with the succession planning that we've uh, put in place with all the people that we have here and, and the replacements that have taken over from the good the people who have retired. And uh, we've been putting forth the, the balanced budgets each year and working on uh, prioritizing what monies that we do have to spend, like the uh, pool, that was the biggest project, and we're working on a uh, five-year program with our parks and trying to keep their infrastructure uh, up and running and keep it effective for and make, make nice uh, amenities for everybody to utilize in the neighborhoods. And that's basically it. I'll just defer to the rest of the questions. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Usually people don't need a microphone to hear me. David, uh, thank you for all the kind words you said about Whitehall. Uh, we're proud to have been part of making many of those things happen. Um, I've been uh, in Whitehall. I can't say all my life, like everybody, I was born in Castle Shan, moved to Whitehall when I was five years old, so that was a long time ago. And my, my class was the founding class of Spitler School, which is now the uh, Wesleyan School on Cassidy Drive. Um, went there, went to Whitehall Junior High, Baldwin High School, uh, Washington and Jefferson, got a degree there, and then I got a master's degree at the uh, University of Pittsburgh. Um, been on council for Quite a while, one of my mentors was our friend back there, Andy Sackmore, uh, who got me interested in the borough. While I was in college, I worked uh, on the road crew for five years and uh, just continued uh, living in Whitehall and trying to do the best we can with the funds that are available for uh, all the people. Sometimes it's a tug of war. You can't please all the people all the time, but I think we've done a pretty good job at it. Thank you very much. Uh, John Paravani. I'm originally from Baldwin County.
Township. I lived there for 36 years until we uh, moved here to um, Whitehall. We were trying for many years to get into Steeple Chase. We finally had an opportunity to get in there. So um, with my experience as a former law and township commissioner for eight years, and I'm currently on the Steeple Chase HOA board, I know how to, or what it takes to be a voice for the, um, for the residents. And uh, uh, the residents should be able to um, give their opinion on important, important matters that they feel need to be expressed and um, two-way communication is needed. 100% um, transparency is needed to the board, to this community, to the elected health support, live streaming, to, um, so all residents can be informed at all times. If you can't make the meeting, be able to log in and, and watch the meeting live. Um, as I post on my Facebook page, my most important um, thing that I passionate about is public safety. It should always come first in my book. Um, the, the first, well, I guess the most thing uh, for me that I am passionate about is the um, fire department during the day. Um, there's um, not enough time in fire response. So I fully supported the duty shift program, which I was very happy to hear last night. Uh, the board finally approved to fund this, support this program. However, it is disappointing that it took a five month fight in the potential threat of a new candidate to give this matter the attention it deserved. Um, I thank you for considering me and your vote will be going to the line with me. Um, and it will be a privilege to represent the residents of Whitehall. Thank you. something about uh, live streaming. I'm going to ask you when you get your answer, will you address how that would be paid for and what the, what the cost would be since you brought that up. And I'm going to ask that of every other candidate that brings up an idea. I want to hear what it costs and how they get paid for it. Sir? Right. Hello, everyone. My name is Jerry Rose. Uh, I am a transplant to Whitehall. I've been here since 2012. Originally from Altoona, Pennsylvania. Um, after high school, I joined the United States Marine Corps and served five years of active duty. Joined that time frame, served two combat deployments in Iraq. Um, also uh, served in some peacekeeping missions and a, and a lot of training. Um, from the Marine Corps, I uh, moved to Pittsburgh, followed my now wife, who was my fiance at that time, attended the, attended the United, uh, University of Pittsburgh, uh, in which I earned a bachelor's degree in health information management. I then went on to work for UPMC for a period of time, and eventually to with the Department of Veterans Affairs. With the Department of Veterans Affairs, I conducted compensation and pension adjudications, authorizing funding uh, to veterans in need of veteran services. I then transitioned into a field examiner position in which I conducted criminal and um, both criminal and financial investigations in individuals that we propose to be fiduciaries for veterans, their spouses, and their dependents. Uh, along with doing those investigations, I was also responsible for conducting, conducting fraud investigations anytime that there was a possibility of fraud, waste, and abuse of federal funds. A few years ago, I transitioned from the, uh, the VA and became a stay-at-home father to raise three ch children who are now 14, 11, and 9. I spend the majority of my time at youth fields coaching basketball, soccer, baseball, cross-country, track, uh, and I'm also a member of the um, athletic board for Mother Mercy Academy, which was previously the St. Gabriel School. Thank you. to get a chance to speak with all of you tonight. I'm originally from the South Hills, but my husband and I, 13 years ago, chose to live in Whitehall. And we chose to raise our family here and our two kids. We chose to live in Whitehall and we loved it so much that instead of moving when we needed a bigger house, we moved across the street. <laughs> that's how much we love Whitehall. And that's how much I want to be involved in the community. 
We're at the soccer field, so Jeremy, I'm probably seeing you there. We are at gymnastics meets. We're at scout meetings where I see Beth Lynn. Um, we are moving around the neighborhood with the job, going to the park, and trying to be out there and enjoying all the wonderful things that Whitehall has to offer. My goal for running for council is truly just to be a voice, not only for families, with especially young children, but for every single person in our community so that they all feel that they have their voice heard and that the decisions that we make as a borough have a chance to reflect everyone's needs. So thank you very much for your time and welcome this evening.
it is a wonderful thing to do, and you have not paid additional taxes. There's nothing else we can do other than keep moving, doing and creating the things for each and every one of you. That's been our purpose the whole time. So that is how I would answer your question. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mr. Moderator, why was um, uh, Mr. Crane not getting yeah. asked? Um, the, the initial time we serve Mr. Crane and you, and we keep him going down to answer the questions. So everybody gets to answer the question first. Um, so the way I see is the biggest challenge facing Whitehall, we, we do have a lot of amenities, but I think the biggest issue we have is the communication between our government and our citizens. There are a lot of people in here today, much more than I thought would be here, because there's a frustration with how council is communicating its ideas and its goals and its plans with the rest of the community. They might be able to say it in certain areas, but they're not getting it out to enough people. Uh, the council meeting last night, if anybody was there, was an example of that. There was a lot of frustration because of a lack of communication. At that point, there was more communication about issues, but, at that, but when it got there, it was too late. You had already upset enough people because you weren't being up front to begin with. So I think that engaging the community more, finding better ways to bring groups together uh, to plan for parts or to talk about the pool and have more input so that they can talk and have their ideas and communicate with their friends and keep that community engagement going is the way to uh, solve that challenge. Thank you. I think the biggest uh, problem that we have is raising funds to do the infrastructure improvements that we need to do. Over the years, the DCD and a number of uh, other organizations and government bodies that uh, we must agree to have required us to fix all our sewers and our flooding for sanitary and state and uh, stormwater. And uh, we've been working on that for a number of years. And uh, literally, there are millions of dollars in the ground with all these sewer pipes. Infrastructure like that, like our parks, we have some uh, five-year park program that we're working on right now. And we're funding it as we go along and trying to uh, uh, meet the needs of these uh, neighborhood parks. They're not uh, sports complexes, but they are neighborhood parks, so we have to take a look at what, uh, what neighborhood they're in, what type of uh, activities that they want. And uh, to pay for all that, we've been trying to deal with a little bit of debt, which we do have now. That's how the pool got paid for, or is being paid for. And that also included some debt that was left over from putting the fire department. And we borrowed that $7.5 million or 2.2%. So it's a very good way to fix and readjust it in five years. But my point is uh, to keep up with the infrastructure and the community and the different things that, uh, that we've come to enjoy, it does take money and it takes good, prudent financial planning. And that's what we try to do. Uh, prioritize the projects based upon some dollars, based upon the residents' needs, and uh, that, that's basically a, a short synopsis of the process. So we need to continue to do that to build white and keep the white out where it is today. Thank you. I don't like to use the word problems. I don't think we have any problems. I think we have challenges. The same challenges that all of you have with your personal finances, especially during these inflationary times. It's uh, you know, it's something we have to deal with on a continuing basis to make sure that we have public safety. Uh, we have the road crew, I think, is second to none, and all the other departments, the library, whatnot. Um, it, it's, it, it's always a balance. Um, you know, when you are in a government body, you're kind of like Taffy. Somebody's always pulling at you. Uh, this year, we had a request for lacrosse. A couple years ago, we had more requests for soccer, things like that that go on. Uh, I hear a lot about transparency. We usually get three or four people at our council meeting. But we must be doing something right. Anybody's welcome to come. We encourage people to come. We have no need to hide. We meet, we talk, we engage residents. We talk to them after the meeting. We'll talk to them before the meeting. We have nothing to hide. We're all proud of what we do. So we, we already have contacted on, a long time ago our communications company, which is Comcast to put in place um, 
live streaming the internet. Uh, it's, not, it's not an easy process. They're backed up like everybody else. They gave us an 18 month window and they reduced that down now as well. We're going to do that. We have to pay for it. They don't come for free. But it's a priority. There's no lack of transparency in the white world. And I think we've done a great job in keeping in touch with the residents. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Thank you. So you still have 30 seconds. Now, hold on next How would you pay for it? And who would you be in charge of the camera? And who would broadcast it? How would it We haven't gotten that far, Dave. As far as uh, paying for it, we pay for it uh, you know, out of taxes dollars like we do everything else. Uh, as far as, uh, and that's a challenge. Is, uh, you know, who works the camera? Um, do you have multiple cameras so that you don't have to have somebody there spotlighting on something? I've been with council meetings in other municipalities, and that's always a challenge. But yeah, it would be paid for by tax dollars. The reason I ask that question is Pennsylvania General Assembly, for many years, we had no cameras on the floor. It was a big debate. The final we had cameras, but they were controlled by the house employees, so you never saw somebody reading the paper and sleeping. So, <laughs> There, there's an issue there. I don't see anybody sleeping or reading the paper at the uh, Whitehall here, but uh, that's just a little bit of trivia for you. So when you watch the House of Representatives on PCN, you see the guy in the back. I'm calling and say, hey, you know you're on TV. You better put the paper down. All right, next person here. John. Yes. Can you question one more time, please? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that, um, that's, I've been hearing this a lot, and when I go to the meetings, I feel the same way. Um, transparency, I feel like when I go to meetings, to for a bunch of meetings, I feel like some of the current council members lost touch with the residents in their opinions on certain things. Um, the transparency is needed, that's why um, we uh, fully support streaming the meetings for people that, that can't come. And, um, there's actually a resident that lives in Whitehall and has a successful electrical business that has volunteered to update all our, the whole system of the building so we could live stream. So that would, would take any cost to taxpayers and it could get done way before um, the 12 months uh, would be, the Comcast would do it. So it would be, um, like I said, no cost to the residents and once we get it going, that will be yeah, the same thing. We'll come up to the, uh, the, the tax dollars and now putting it into the budget and taking a better look at the budget when the time comes. But it will be minimal cost. Thanks for answering the question. I appreciate it. Thank you. Give me, give me the guy's number because I have some work done in my life. <laughs> Transparency and communication is um, some of our biggest challenges here. We're dealing with uh, a large spectrum of, gen uh, of ages, multiple generations within the community. Uh, a large portion of our generation is 55 and older. So you have kind of a big mix of half the community is, is using technology for communicating. Um, reading about what's going on in the borough, maybe commenting, complaining about issues within the borough, and a portion of the community that still relies mainly on the newspaper. Neither one is a, a, a good or bad um, form of communication, but I feel that the borough could communicate their ideas and their projects better. Uh, a few, big topic is the swimming, swimming pool. Uh, when, uh, when the project started years ago, there was a survey sent out to residents to respond regarding what they would like to see as the new swimming pool. I've yet to meet a single person within Whitehall that has actually received that. That Okay, good. There's a couple of me here. I'm happy that, that, that a few people did receive that survey. Because I know myself and, and, and a, a large amount of my neighbors that I'm friends with did not receive that survey. Um, so, my biggest thing is communicating with the citizens, making it a two-way two street, uh, and being transparent with decisions that are being made throughout the borough. Thank you.
competitive. But communication is definitely a thing that we need to take a look at. But more specifically, we need to be proactive instead of reactive. We've seen a lot recently, especially on Facebook, right? We've all seen the postings that we're all very upset about things, but the borough is coming out with information that has the borough posted information, provided information up front, we really could have saved everybody a lot of heartache, a lot of headaches, and a lot of angry typing, right? I, I saw a few heads nodding that, that that's not a bad idea. We need to have a clear form of communication that gets out to the borough, not just with our annual letters and our annual magazines, but that happens timely so that residents are coming to activities. Because with communication, it improves our neighborhood involvement. It brings people to the parks, to the library, to all of the recreation board activities. There's a fantastic program, but a lot of people don't know about it, and they're not able to know about it because the communication is unfortunately behind. Or for some of our older residents, residents, excuse me, the communication is only online, and that's not their comfortable form of finding out what's going on in our community. So my answer is communication as well as community involvement. Thank you. They text, they do the Twitter, they do all that stuff. That's way over my head. So my question to you is, how do you intend to communicate with the constituents? Do you run at large or is uh, by district? At large. At large. How do you intend to communicate? Will you give them your cell phone number? You have people come to your house. At church, sometimes I had the line longer at the end than the priest had. And so, you know, at the funeral homes, it doesn't matter where you're at, the ball game with the kids. How do you, and this is a one minute question, by the way, one minute answer, one minute, Cindy. Okay. So how would you intend to communicate with them on a personal basis? Well, I'm known for going out to see many people in my whole borough. When I would get calls, I would go. I'm not speaking for anybody else. I've been out of many houses, talking to people, figuring out how they can get the help they need to get because maybe the code misunderstands it or they don't know. 
If you go out throughout the borough, you see that I'm amongst it all day long community painting. Yes, you can use your cell phone. I use it basically for everything. I don't use a computer for a lot. But we do have a brand new program set up in the last year. If you take time to go through it, it's been an improving and improving more. So we are in that juncture. I don't know what you're seeing, I'm not seeing, but it might be something. Or you're used to greater communications. But you have to, as a councilman or a councilwoman, get yourself up, make phone calls to people when they call you. And I've returned multiple, multiple calls over my years. Thank you. Um, so in, how, in terms of how to communicate with people, I think we can start easily by every council member has a phone number, whether it's through the council or something listed, obviously not the personal number, or an email to get in touch. I think that's a very simple solution. Going on the website last time I was there, not everybody has a website or an email address or a phone number. Um, as a prime example, the South Hills record, they wanted to, you know, they do their typical interviewing, sending your questions every year, or for every election cycle. And when I was communicating, the person had to ask me, do you know how to get in touch with Mr. Navy or Mr. Lar? I said, I have no idea how to get in touch with them. Send an email to the info at whitehallboro.com. That shouldn't be the way. Someone should feel the ability to directly communicate with who they feel should represent them. Thank you. Let's say communication. My phone number is out there. My email is out there. My office is right down the street. I, uh, I conduct business uh, at my office too if people want to talk. Uh, I just want to enlighten some of the folks that we started a communication campaign last year after the chief we did our dispatch center. We spent over $200,000 working on that set of communication. And that's where we realized that we didn't have a proper media for this building. We had a DSL line, not fiber. That's what Comcast is going to do, put fiber in. Once we have fiber in, then we can proceed with the, the uh, meetings and the picture hanger broadcasting and so forth. Uh, the other side of the communications, if uh, we've started the, uh, the program, we did, we did the website, and we're working on doing a lot of things on Facebook and, and so forth, uh, we're getting the information out there now. Everyone tends to work a little bit slow, but we are making progress by working on those communications. Thank you. I'm in a little bit of a different situation with my cell phone. I'm a self-employed uh, franchisee, independent insurance adjuster. I operate under the auspices of a national company. I uh, use my phone for my business and make my living. Um, but I still have one of those old things they call a landline with Verizon's old copper wires. My number is 412-884-3847. Anybody can call at any time. Probably won't answer it right then because you don't hear it. But if there's a message on there and you have something, I'll get back to you. And again, we have nothing to hide. We're willing to communicate with people. We talk to our friends. I see most of you I know. You've been to a council meeting once or twice. Anybody who's able to approach us and ask anything they want. So we're, we're out there. Thank you. did this program in um, well, the Commissioner of Mullen Township. It was very simple. It is all the, uh, well, back we had commissioners had business cards. And on our business card was our name, phone number, email address, phone number of the borough building, phone number of the police. And um, just pass those out every time we're out in the public. If someone needed something, it was very easy to, to get in touch with, with people and for them to get in touch with us. And when I see this uh, magazine, or White Hall Magazine here comes out, and it's very colorful. I see everybody's picture in there on every page of the, of the, of the council, but there's no email addresses or any personal email address on there. So I would just have everybody have an email address and phone number and pass those cards out. It would be very easy to communicate um, that way. Thank you.
the board, we all voted, we agreed to do that. That's how I uh, initiated that start up. I brought it to the board and everybody agreed to do it. We all had email oh. addresses. You can make up, it's your personal one, you can make up a second email address. Okay, interesting. I stand corrected. You have more weeks. The moderator has done it for us at our own parts of the So we pass them out and we get another thousand. Okay. I don't have a business card, um, <laughs> but but I would be willing to carry them and pass them out if need be. I'm not a big deal at all. I, you know, as you, as you look at me, I'm a fairly big guy, kind of scary looking to some people, but I'm fairly approachable, fairly nice human being. Um, <laughs> I'd be willing to give my phone number out to anybody who wants to talk about any issues, even if you just want to talk and and uh, pass some time. Provide me with my email address. If you want to write a letter? I'll write a letter back to you. Hand sign it, whatever you may may, may like. Um, you see me at, the, uh, at a field or at church at St. Gabe's, you can feel free to stop me and ask me whatever you would like. Uh, if you have questions or concerns, feel free you can bring, bring them to me, and I will do my best to provide you with an answer or to find a um, solution to your issue. Thank you. Email, phone, fax if you want it. Mail it here to the borough building. All of these things are options, and hopefully those meet everybody's needs. I love the idea, of course, of having Lacey Thomas at whitehall.org. I love that. I would put it on a business card, 100%. I would carry that business card. And if I saw you at the grocery store, I'd be happy to hand it to you. If I saw you at a field, I'd be happy to talk with you. And if you really wanted to corner me, while I was walking my dog, <coughs> totally fine. He might lick you and say hello, but I'm happy to speak with you and any constituent, anywhere, anytime. That's not a problem. That's what we're here for. That's what we're trying to be here for, for some of us, right? That's why we're here. So, wherever you want to meet. Library, I love the library. You can meet there too. Thank you.
help with the, the translation to our neighbors. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Uh, I'm kind of switching up on timeline here to keep it moving, so bear with me. This one's a minute and a half question. This is from the floor. What is your plan to grow the business tax base or increase development along the Route 51 corridor? Um, that's a very specific question. Um, <laughs> to increase the business tax base, we need to put more businesses over there. Um, we, we go up and down the Route 51 corridor and we'll see a bunch of empty businesses. How do we get more businesses into the area? The buildings over there, quite frankly, are awful. I don't know what we can do about that. The parking over there is terrible. I don't know what we can do about that. That's a part of the own property. But um, I think the idea that most municipalities might have to bring in businesses to, if it helps to get a small business in to give a tax break, then maybe that's what we look into doing. Um, I, I don't know the feasibility of that, but if that's something you can do to at least get someone's foot in the door so that they can establish themselves and grow their business over there, that, I, I think that's the first place to start. Well, as you all know, Whitehall is a bedroom community. Corridor that's been worked on and tried with the Economic Development Corporation. Those properties are mostly owned by uh, Linda Dunner, who is the owner of the ski, and uh, they are working on their properties. And it's their right to do what they want with them. And as long as they're in compliance, then we will work with them. And we have worked with them in the past. They, they sold a piece of property on the corner there that's actually the present where the hospital is. And uh, Linda was up here the other day talking about uh, getting some permits for some other things that they were working on um, down there in the 51 corridor that we know. So there really isn't much room for development of business properties in here unless you're home businesses. And if they're not taxed the same way, there's probably a lot of businesses in that So we just have to work with our existing tax base and uh, try to make sure that the infrastructure and the different uh, things that we provide as a borough can you know, services that they're kept up to be top notch so that so we can <laughs> have little businesses that have a you know, small stuff to pay for. How many of you love Jesse Bush? Nobody loves Jesse Bush. You know how fortunate we are to have a, a, a viable working uh, strip mall type business situation there? Rarely an empty storefront. Um, other communities will trade that in a second. Route 51, it's an issue. When I was on the economic development staff board from its inception, somebody from the county, one of the uh, development people, said, when we land on Mars, there'll be a yellow sign that says, see Wolitsky Brothers. They control pretty much most of 51, but a lot of people don't realize where you think it's Whitehall, some of it's Brentwood. We think Brentwood, some of it's Whitehall. Uh, very few people have a, an idea what the delineation is. But uh, yeah, we, we, we've always been friendly to business. We have very few complaints of business prospects coming to the borough and criticizing us for anything. Uh, we're open to work with them any way we can. Yeah, 51's a challenge. It's uh, not, not just here at Whitehall, but like this drive up and down. So yeah, we try to work with it, but there's some constraints on that. Thanks. Yes, um, that 51 is a becoming what has been for a long time for, um, and like some of us said, that it's privately owned. So we sort of had the same situation in Baldwin Township, the landlord of a lot of property, and um, the only thing we would try to do is now that the current council have tried this maybe is more pressure on the buildings on uh, codes and forcing her to for them to upgrade the building so it's more presentable to rent. And I'm sure some of those buildings, if you look at them, you drive by, they have to be under code. And if you would pressure them to upgrade the property, that might be more appealing to someone to rent it and maybe come to the borough and work some kind of deal, like some kind of uh, tax break or something for like the first couple of years or something just to make it more attractive to open up a business. But there again, 
the problem with that property is it is it's privately owned. Those properties are privately owned. Uh, as long as the, the, the buildings are within the code and our uh, taxes are paid, not a whole lot we can do to force somebody to, to make changes. Um, right. Can't force them to sell. Uh, and like I said, as, as long as they're compliant with everything we have here on the books within the borough. Um, I have to let them, let them go. So, we only really have, have a true solution for you. Well, it's certainly a tough, a tough spot to look look through, and you have guests come, and it doesn't look the nicest all the time. But 51 does provide an excellent opportunity for growth because, honestly, there is so much traffic on 51. Tax rates. I don't disagree. I don't know how it would all work, but if we work something to look into as an incentive, incentivization. But also, you know, we have to think about the amount of flow that comes through that area and how attractive that would be to some of your larger businesses, such as, don't hurt me for this, a Starbucks, right? Something like that, like a Starbucks, how much traffic are they looking for? Is that a feasible option to go to some larger corporations and have a coffee place, a drive-through, something like that that could maybe outpay what Levitsky wants for their land and make it change hands? Maybe that's an option. Just an idea. Thank you.
economic development could possibly be there. But hey, I was a kid here in the 90s, so I remember that there used to be a pool hall on um, Route 51 that you could go in there if you were over 18 <laughs> and not have a, a drink. It was awesome. <laughs> You have to put shrubbery, you have to put gravel or rocks. But it's up to the person that owns the business, not us. Not the county, no one else. Do you want to throw that on everybody that has a business? Do you ever run a business? And everybody throws trouble on top of you, you're in trouble. However, as Bob said, it's owned, or maybe it was Glenn, owned by the Levinsky family. They have major control on the driveways. And then I'm about to give it up because it makes money for them. It made money for him, became wealthy over it. In our opinion, in my opinion, it was a slum yard, Lord. But we can't control someone's private property, neither can you or these new people. You have to learn about what it was all about in the first place. And I will tell you with a big gas station in the middle school, and if it happens to be right now, I think that's oil, will be a new car wash. Yeah, another one. I asked the same question. But that's what they wanted to do there, and we can't stop them. Yeah. Anybody, you know, there, there are laws that we go by. Thank you. All right, this is another question from the floor. I have no idea of rhyme or reason of who's going to answer what questions, so I'm just kind of picking them out as I go, so bear with me. How will your service as Whitehall Council support clean, green, sustainable choices for our future? This is a minute and a half. I'll repeat the question. How will your service on the Whitehall Council support clean, green, sustainable choices for our future? Well, we're actually investigating a solar complex that's still on top of the new salt down there. So we've been working on that. We uh, work with the Shade Tree Commission with the uh, trees. And uh, while we were away in a seminar at Seven Springs with the Allegheny the Municipalities, there was a great discussion talking about electric vehicles. And actually, our neighbors in West Midland have gotten And they were able to get some grant money and get the uh, stations, the, the charging stations uh, installed in there too. So they're kind of the experiment out there right now about fleet vehicles and, and the pros utilizing some police cars, electric cars for uh, electrification. So we've been working on those things, we're conscious of that, and uh, that's where we stand right now. Glenn Corbin, before you start. Sure. If there's any question from the floor, there's someone can pass out these cards and send them up to me, I'll read them. But they're more of a general question instead of specific questions, if you could. Uh, so if anybody has questions, please bring them up. I'm running out of questions. Please. Yeah, Bob pretty much answered the question. There's a uh, county organization called Connect. Connect is uh, really pushing, uh, uh, assisting municipalities in developing the solar power. Our borough manager, Courtney Works, has attended seminars and discussions with other municipalities that are uh, considering doing it. Uh, it's not something to do every night. Uh, there is an expense and there is a payback period. And uh, we're going to investigate what that payback period is as opposed to the expense. Um, it's not free to put those on. So it has to, it has to be a workable uh, mathematical problem. So we're, we're doing the, uh, we're, we're definitely looking into the uh, solar. And uh, as Bob said, we have our, our great little witty bitty lady back there with the mask on. She's our tree lady. <laughs> She's our tree lady. That's Donna. And Donna keeps us in line. If you were the counseling last night, you saw how she did it. <laughs> Keeping streams from now in the towns. 
So uh, we have several things in mind. Yeah, pretty much the same. Um, electric vehicles seem to be uh, the way to go. And as long as there is, um, well, there's a lot of grants out there for certain things like that. I would be um, using tax dollars up to a certain point, but as long as there are grants out there, I would support more of the, some of the electric vehicles. Um, the, the parks, some of the parks that are getting upgraded for that purpose, and right, we're putting more trees in, the current council are putting more trees in certain parks that would um, go towards that uh, clean energy. And um, yeah, I just think that the, I think we're a ways off, probably for like police vehicles going electric, but that would be another option down the road because they're, they use a lot of, um, you know, gas and, and cost effective that way, but that would be, probably down the road, but like I said, as long as there's grants out there, I can fully support um, more uh, green energy. Thank you. So it's good to hear the council has been working on this issue. Uh, first time I've heard about it, but um, I'm all for entertaining grants or programs from the state and federal levels to improve our uh, you know, our, our green footprint, whether it be solar panels within uh, our facilities or, you know, planting, planting additional trees, um, community cleanup days to at least clean up the, the, the litter that is uh, kind of in a, a, lot of, a lot of the parks along the side of, along the, side of the road.
the, the parks borough can go and, and take it away. Instead, we have to wait around for an annual feel good sort of event that I really hope that people will do attend at Prospect Park the, this Saturday where there's going to be a trash cleanup effort. But an ounce of the French is worth a pound of cure, so let's actually do recycling at the parks. It makes sense, it makes sense to get people into the parks and enjoying the fresh air and nature. any of you don't know, I run the Citizens of Whitehall Borough Facebook page. Um, and we put this out there that this was going on. And he commented that he's at a band concert for one of his kids. And I replied back to him and said, kids come first. So that's where he is tonight. He apologizes for not being here. Okay. This is a one minute question. We're going to move through here. Why is there not a single crosswalk on Bronzeville Road from Curry to something supply get it? Because it's a major busway. I'm from all that. Thank you. 
state roads. We're very limited in what we can do with the state. Anybody said it was the state knows that. So uh, as far as the crosswalk, uh, very limited what we can do. But if there's a need for it, we can always talk about it. All right, so that was just a general one. It didn't apply, it sounds like. So yeah. let's, let's try one more here. How do we address blight in Whitehall, uh, boarded homes, overgrown yards, et cetera? Hey, you want me to know? Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a, a charm of mine. He had five years uh, serving on the Economic Development South Board, and uh, that was one of our uh, main focuses was to try to eliminate blight. We don't have a lot of blight. Everybody has some. We all have some. more difficult 
And I would love to see some type of a community relation program where we could have volunteers, especially volunteers from the high school. The kids are always looking for volunteer hours before they can graduate. Getting those kids connected through the borough in order to help our citizens that need it. Thank you.
it's a very lengthy and timely process. Even in the Asheville Court, I know I've been working on a parking issue, and that parking issue is over a year old. They finally got to the courts today. People have to do proper notices. They get 30, 60, 90 days to comply, and then it goes on from there. So it's not a fast process. And then the portion of when the borough gets involved, then we start putting lien money on there for cutting the grass and other repairs and things that we do. So the House on Demon is the same way. We get involved, we get it cleaned up. One of the things is once you start putting those liens in, and this probably starts cutting now, as a lawyer, I'm just telling you, it's a liability issue for having municipal employees on other people's property. Who knows what happens? So it becomes difficult. I think one of the answers is, is there enforcement by your district justice to show that there's teeth behind the ordinance? And I don't know that. That's just a comment in general. So um, we're going to wrap up here very shortly. I have one more question, then we're going to go through um, two minutes of everybody. We'll start with Lacey and then come back. I don't know who gets the next question. Is it you, John? Okay, so. Recently at Alon, Allegheny County League of Municipalities this weekend had their conference in Seven Springs. And one of the subjects of discussion was a EMS ordinance. Presently, you spend approximately $250,000 for your EMS, and it's, a, I believe, an in-kind contribution because they house your, um, yes? I assume that board of directors as a still, and uh, it's not an in-kind contribution, it's the, uh, essentially the deficit Well, that's your payment towards right. Yeah. Okay. So I, I misspoke on the terminology. But, so you spend two hundred fifty thousand dollars that you provide a service, I guess, with the garage and electricity and utilities. And instead of paying the outright cash, you do it in another manner. At the League of Municipalities, there was discussion. In my municipality, is Westview Ross EMS. I used to be a charter member, and we just went to a a. Uh, EMS ordinance where it's now a direct pay. So before we were volunteering to pay, we would pay on our own to be members, and the municipality pays something. Now, because of what's being discussed, we have to pay directly to the EMS because there's an EMS ordinance, which is similar to what you probably do here for your garbage. You pay directly to your garbage. You don't pay directly to your garbage? Oh my God, I'm moving the white house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no wonder everybody's here tonight. <laughs> but anyway, the, the discussion is it's similar to what I pay for my garbage. I pay that directly to BFI or um, who have to pay it for. So um, would you be in favor, this is a one, one minute, this is a quick question, of a EMS ordinance where it would be direct pay instead of being the 250000 you're providing service? Uh, would you do that because that would open a hole in you that would create $250,000 in your budget for other things? My question is clear, John, or I need to reach that? You know, I'm not too sure what you're exactly asking here. Would you be in favor of the EMS ordinance that would be a direct case from the residents to the EMS? You know, the yeah, I, I, I sort of uh, agree with the way it is now. I don't know why we would have to change that. I mean, it's coming up. We're paying taxes anyway, and that's and that's what currently they're paying out of it. the way it's being paid. I don't see any cause to change it. So you know, I'm in favor of keeping it the way the way it is. It would be part of your taxes. It's already part of your taxes anyway. So why not separate? Okay. The only reason I raise the issue is when it happens in Philadelphia, it's coming to Pittsburgh. When it happens in other parts of the municipalities in Allegheny County, it's coming your way eventually. It might be three years, five years, ten years. It's just a quick yes or no. Personally, I'm fine out with how it is now. Uh, I know. I guess I don't know a whole lot on the on the issue. Uh, maybe the gentleman that's sitting on the board might, might be able to provide more information on it. I know Pittsburgh, um, you, you pay a $52 tax every year, so uh, if it's similar to that, then maybe it'd be something to look at. But currently, I feel that it, it, using the taxpayer dollars how we do now is, is perfectly fine. I think I can't answer the question 
without more actual concrete information because I don't know how much that's going to be and I don't know how that's going to impact our residents. So if we're asking them to pay taxes and then pay more, I don't know what that's going to be for our fixed income residents. So I wouldn't be able to answer that question exactly right now. I would need more information. Thank you. Well, I'm going to take a motion. I'm going to take a, a motion from the moderator to strike that question. So that's okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, you want to answer? You want to answer? Goes up here. Yes, ma'am, you're up. Yes, I am aware that the, the medical team itself does solicit um, a contribution for their insurance. And what I did not know until I had a, an ambulance call on myself on December 5th, 2022, was the fact that they ask you to go ahead and register your whole family with their health insurance up front before an event occurs so that they know who to bill. And get ready for it, it is not in network. You get a discount whenever you subscribe to Medical Team Self. I really do encourage that you do it. I really, really super encourage that you participate in the fire department's the annual fund. And let's please not make that a mandatory thing because it would be a, a burden to some individuals. It's one of many meetings that we have to go to. Bob and I have been on board. How many years are you? 20, Bob? Maybe 15 for me? And uh, we find many things. It's so important. Harold Brookhoven, if anybody remembers Harold Brookhoven, who was on council, said, I don't care what it costs as long as I got the ambulance in my house when I needed it. I used it multiple times with my wife before she passed. Multiple. Yes, some of the costs have changed. But if you have any idea what it costs to run an ambulance service, and medical rescue team path is number two in Allegheny County, the city of Pittsburgh is one. Bob, you can answer the numbering system. The finances. Oh, the finances. Yeah, the finances. Here's what basically happens. There's different types of calls, ALS and BLS. ALS is advanced life support, typically MRSA. That costs, I'm using round numbers here, folks. It costs $1,000 for an ALS trip. Between insurance and the, and the fees that we pay and everything, we end up getting about four or $500 for that $1,000 trip. The costs have gone extraordinarily crazy. When I first started with MRSA a number of years ago, an ambulance was anywhere between $80,000 and $100,000, and they went up to about $125,000. Now, they're $350,000 to $400,000 each. We have seven of them. Then we, uh, the pricing that you're talking about, sir, the direct fee base, yes, that is being studied right now because you have problems with the insurance companies like Highmark that will not pay us directly. They pay the insurer. Then we have to go chase the insurer for that money, which costs time and resources. It's a big circle problem. It's, it's being addressed. The legislators are looking at it. And the fee base, there won't be any it won't be direct, at least you're not in a way yet. It's just how we calculate the final shares of what the is going to be for. But it will be coming because the cost of going up. A stretcher alone in one of the ambulances is over $60,000 just for the stretcher. Yes. Then you got all the training of all the people and everything that are involved. It's a very costly public safety. But it is necessary. I can pay a merchant to talk to training people in there. I'll throw two to Dr. Jesse, who's right here tonight. Jesse used to work at Marcel. Uh, since I was on the board. But he can explain it. But it's, it, it it's, a, it's a problem that they are addressing it, working it. I just wanted to relate the cost to everybody. Dave, I don't know which I've seen you do. I think on the Senate or on the uh, House floor. I'll yield my time to Bob if he has any. 
Um, and I think my eight years of uh, being Commissioner of Lowell Township would be an asset to Whitehall, uh, the Whitehall Board. So the only other thing I can say is I would like to iterate uh, be more, more transparent and more available to answer anybody's questions at any time. Um, thank you.
just whoever wins, please, all I want you to do is to be worthy in your heart. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I actually was the one who approached the Democratic Committee to call for this meeting, to have the opportunity to introduce myself and my fellow candidates to you. Not everyone has the opportunity to come to council. I've been to council thrice in the past two, four months because I've uh, suffered a lot of personal illnesses between myself and uh, my eight-year-old child and uh, my senior parents who live with me. So uh, I ask that you don't vote for me if you don't want to change. Mary, if you're a Republican, please don't vote for me because there are fine Republicans out here to choose for. I am looking to be someone who is responsible with taxpayer money, a very rare fiscally conservative Democrat with a heart, with a heart for everyone here and everyone to the conversations just because they are perhaps not registered to vote. However, they are taxpayers to their residents to I love